Keep calm and avoid bad microbes. <clears throat> Maybe it's not so much avoiding the bad ones is not having the good ones. You really need to have the good ones to help defend you from the bad ones. So this is me back in my military career when I was a test pilot. Um, so you thought autism was scary. <clears throat> we are entering the danger zone. And we're entering the danger zone because when you start to comment on big agra and big pharma and big government, Stephanie, you attract a lot of favorable attention, don't you? No, you really don't. But let's, let's jump in. Okay, so this is a great textbook, The Empty Harvest. Has anybody read this book? It's awesome. It talks about how our agricultural systems, the way we're growing crops, is leaving us deficient and hollow. We don't have the nutrients that we used to. We used to let farmlands flood, and they would build up nutrients, and they would give us lots of great things and trace minerals and vitamins and all kinds of good stuff. Now when you look at the vitamin content of the food that you're eating, do you see anything there? Almost all of it says does not contain a meaningful amount of anything in it, except carbohydrates. <coughs> I love this one. Do you also eat these with the mask on? Do you eat those with the mask on? How are you protecting yourself from that stuff? So Doris Rapp, how many of you have heard Doris Rapp speak before? Good. I mean, this is of my mentors. Doris is in the top five of all time. I love Doris Rapp. She is the queen of environmental disorders. Um, she and I spoke collectively. I've worked with her association. I've helped to fund some of her research. I think she's brilliant, and she's out there, you know, crying, you know, wake up, because you're poisoning ourselves, yourselves. And this is from her, and I'm, I just want to read it to you, because it's, this is a great compliment. Um, special for Dr. Jeff Bradstreet. Bless you for all you've done, are doing, and will do. So this kind of keeps me motivated, because she says I've got all this stuff to still do. Um, if we could clone you, I'm not in favor of cloning, if we could clone you with all of your expertise, integrity, and caring, the world would be a much better place, with admiration, Doris Rapp. I don't get a lot of compliments. I, there are more websites out there that say bad things about me. I'm an exorcist. I'm, um, I'm a preacher, um, a bad preacher, apparently. One of those, you know, televangelists or something that, you know, obviously should go to jail. Uh, there's so much negative garbage about me. The special master, um, despite the fact that the child that she was complaining about um, has said all kinds of bad things in vaccine court about me. You know why? Because the kid was completely cured and went on to become the valedictorian of his high school class. That's why you say bad things about people. So when you do get these kind of compliments, it's just really nice. But we are on target. So 5.2 billion pounds of pesticides worldwide. 40% of them are herbicides. What does 5.2 billion pounds of pesticides every year do to Mother Earth? Do you have any clue what's happening to us? Does that seem like a lot, 5.2 billion pounds? Wow. <clears throat> okay, how many of you are Midwesterners and are in the red zone? Well, welcome to the party. That's the runoff, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So it really doesn't matter if you think you're organic because the rain, the dust, the wind around you isn't organic. Environmental chemical exposures and autism spectrum disorders, a review of the epidemiological evidence. There's a whole bunch of evidence, by the way. It falls into immune, endocrine, epigenetic, microbiome, and mitochondrial disorders. They get it. This is a great review. You need this paper because it's talking about all the things. How did the microbiome get screwed up in the first place? It's not just being born C-section and getting antibiotics. It's an ongoing insult on the microbiome from what's happening in the ecosystem and the immune system. So Mother Nature, she's got a pretty tight squeeze from big chemical, big agri, and big pharma. Um, we're not treating her very nicely anymore. And Mother Nature has a dark side. She does kind of get angry and come back and rebel. So um, this is um, from current um, problems in pediatric adolescent health care. This is, I just turned them yellow and pulled them out of the paper. These are not my rewording of it. These are their words. Out of a chemical universe topping 80,000 agents, over 1,000 have laboratory evidence of neurotoxicity. But only a small fraction have been studied in humans during critical windows of development. Wow. Rice. I didn't know they used that much crap on rice. Wow. Poor guy's out there. He's got a respirator on. But do you think it goes through his skin? Yeah. 
I mean, I'm glad he's got a respirator on, but do you think it's going to affect his ability to have healthy children? Yeah, I do. So you thought you were safe because you um, didn't live on a farm, you weren't using chemicals in your house, you don't put Roundup on your weeds at your house. I hope you don't, right? You actually pull those suckers out of the ground the old-fashioned way. Um, but this is a great cycle. It shows that regional transport of these chemicals is occurring. Dust, rain, water, runoff, all of that is exposing you no matter how organic you think you are. Now, being organic is great because it reduces some of that burden, but it doesn't keep you clean. Modern farmers, uh, I covered up who this was actually talking about for my own safety. Um, our farm crops make their own neurotoxins, and that is absolutely the truth. We now have been able to incorporate genetically into crops the ability to make neurotoxins. They're aimed at the insect's neuro, uh, neurological system, so the bugs will get crazy and fall off the leaf. But what do you think it does to you? Uh, pesticides and autism, this is environmental health perspectives. This is from the CHARGE study, which is the University of California, Davis, who's doing some really great work and isn't afraid to tell the truth. And they're a big institution, and they're Californian, so they can talk about the environment and not get beat up and go to jail. So that's a good thing, OK? Uh, they're talking about all the bad stuff that's out there and how it is associated with autism and how they've been able to show its association through the CHARGE study, how close you live to a farm, how close you live to a highway, how close you live to an airport, all affects your risk of autism. Doesn't that look like fun? Don't you want that job? Do, do any of you have this job, by the way? Is, is anybody a farmer doing this? I, like, I feel bad for you if that's the case. So um, that looks like you know, something from um, some toxic waste in a sci-fi movie or something, doesn't it? This is how they distribute it. Yeah. So a helicopter. Talk about aerosolizing and just getting it mixed out there indiscriminately. Bees and birds and anything out there is getting exposed to this. I know you want to shoot yourself now, right? This is a happy lecture, though, isn't it? I feel pretty good about it. Um, <clears throat> assessments of the level of damage to the genetic material of children exposed to pesticides in this little village. It's bad. They're getting exposed in a bad way. This is an amazing study. This actually shows that organochlorine um, pesticides concentrate in the fetus. They're higher in the umbilical cord in the fetus than they are in the mother. I didn't actually know that until I read this. It's being concentrated in the baby, in the womb. So Bacillus thermogenesis, um, the source of Bt toxin, is just a bug. It's natural. It's completely natural. In fact, the Bush administration made um, Bt, which is a natural, it's bacterial, it's natural, right? Mother Nature made it. Made that on the natural products list. It's, you can be organic and have Bt and Bt toxin. So what about Bt toxin? It's called cry, makes me want to cry. So cry toxin is this thing that's designed to basically puncture the intestinal tract lining, break down the intestinal barriers. So now you have defects within the intestinal tract lining. How many of you think you have a kid with leaky gut? Okay, you're getting exposed more likely to cry toxin than you realize. And one of the reasons you have leaky gut and resultant inflammatory bowel disease that maybe doesn't just need anti-inflammatories, but a change in the exposure to these environmental chemicals, because this is what happens. So these are microvilli, and the red stuff is crytoxin attached to the microvilli and breaking through. And you can see the red stuff is actually broken through the epithelial border, is in inside the intestinal wall. That's the crytoxin. You want to have that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day? And you wonder why your kids have belly aches and why um, changing the, the um, probiotic that you're on or putting them on antibiotics doesn't make them necessarily feel better. Until you resolve this issue, you're not going to get that better. So this is a great cartoon to help you remember that. So, and here we have a bunch of food that made, the crops of, uh, the, uh, made from crops that caused insects' stomachs to explode, but it's safe for you. <clears throat> this is really the problem. So um, why, do I, why do these people say that? Because quite literally, Congress in the last 20 years has passed legislation to allow industry to poison you with their permission. That's the reality. 
The only hope that you have is to stop buying that nonsense and try and vote for responsible people. But given the amount of money that's involved in political campaigns, I don't think we can compete easily on the money side. That's going to be really, really tough for us. The money that you can compete with is what comes out of your wallet and what you buy with it. And unfortunately, the quote-unquote organic crops are generally three to five times more expensive. What foods are most affected? Tomatoes, beef, uh, potatoes. Well, um, let's see, in some families, that's uh, number one, two, and three foods, ketchup, um, french fries, and uh, hamburger patties. Um, oranges, lettuce, apples, peaches, pork, wheat, soybeans, uh, beans, carrots, chicken, corn, and grapes. Um, probably just about everything that kids with autism consume on a regular basis, right? Antibiotic sales for meat and poultry hit a record high. So unless you're getting antibiotic-free food, you're giving your kid antibiotics every day. And what do you suppose the consequences is for the microbiome, that gut ecosystem? Not good. Voluntary GMO labeling, just trust us. So Congress a few years ago, and the president, our current president, signed it into law, allows industry to regulate whether or not they tell you the food is GMO or not. It's voluntary. They don't have to disclose it to you. All natural products, oh my gosh. Uh, some of you are actually under the unfortunate impression that the term natural actually means something. It should, right? Natural should mean something, right? It should have a definition. <clears throat> when in fact, it's purely a marketing gimmick. And I, I believe me, this is just crap. And I would, the red flag should go off when you see all natural because they're hiding something from you. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration has no clear definition of natural when applied to food products. Uh, the main rule is it doesn't object to its use. Um, and I'm not really picking on Minute Maid, which is owned by Coke, which is where I live, probably one of the major employers in my hometown of Atlanta. <clears throat> but this is their new, it looks really warm and fuzzy. So they're going after you parents, and they're trying to help you to feel good about what you're doing. You're giving them their all-natural products. So you should be happy. You're a good parent for doing that, right? So this is one of their, their uh, new items that they're really pushing. It's called Cherry Lime Aid. Um, so it has... The number one ingredient is water. The number two ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. On the entire, and natural flavors, by the way, which is what? What is natural flavors? <clears throat> MSG or something like MSG, right? It's a code word for a flavor enhancing agent that they add in. Natural flavors doesn't mean cherry extract. It doesn't mean blueberry extract. It's actually a code word for um, um, some form of flavor enhancing agent, systoic acid, glutamate, something like that, all natural. And how many vitamins are there? None. It gives you 34 grams of carbohydrates, and that's it, nothing else. No vitamins, no vitamin C, no vitamin A, nothing except 34 grams of carbohydrate. There's the all natural uh, high fructose corn syrup sitting on the railway side before it goes from Archer Daniels out to some beverage manufacturer. <clears throat> uh, Harry Truman said, if you can't convince them, confuse them. So that's a good way to work. Um, so Got Milk, this is a great ad, trying to, lots of great people, Superman, Taylor Swift, they're about the same person now. Um, so maybe she's Superwoman. Um, and then the um, Got Autism campaign uh, that came out from Milk. But um, one of the things that most people don't recognize about Milk is how it's homogenized. So how do you get a fat um, to stay in solution. Fats don't want to be in water. <clears throat> you have to send it through this compressor at very high pressure and get the protein molecules to embed into fat globules. So now you have protein, which needs to be digested by um, enzymes that can break down amino acid bonds, embedded in a fat. Do you think you can digest that? You're going to absorb the fat globule with some residues of protein in it that's going to have alterations on your immune system, very clearly. So homogenization is of the devil, okay? Just, I, it should never be allowed. It's a convenience factor, so you don't have to shake up the bottle. That's it. So is milk all bad? Well, the original um, protein in milk, the, the casein protein, was actually an A2, but a mutation took place that was A1, and farmers said, hey, these cows make more milk. This is before they study genes.